Hi. Well, good morning. I'm fogging up. Sorry. There we go. Okay. Well, uh, welcome to Hazelwood, and uh, whether you're joining us here or online, uh, we're happy to see everyone today. Hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving, um, and we're able to spend it with uh, family, friends, and, uh, and that was just a, a wonderful time. All right, got a few announcements here. Um, we've got uh, Winnie's calendars are going to be available in Selenke Commons for $20, so that's uh, out there if you want to stop by and, and get one of those. Uh, we also want uh, to, to uh, ask for some help decorating parts of the church after worship. So if you're available and you have a decorating thumb um, and would like to help with that, that would be great. Uh, we're also looking for six to nine volunteers to serve as reading buddies. Uh, so you'll need to be able to read. If you can't read, please don't sign up for this. Okay? Uh, but we need six to nine volunteers, and the time commitment is 3.30 to 4.30 on Tuesdays and Thursdays, reading with uh, two children, one at a time, okay? So you're not reading to both of them, you're reading one at a time for about 30 minutes each. Uh, if you're willing to consider that, uh, please see Mariana uh, or Reverend Pamela uh, after the service. Okay, and then uh, Reverend Pamela will also get you some more information. The Advent devotionals are on the name tag table, so please pick that up. You each have one. Uh, your name is on it, so don't take someone else's. Just take yours. Uh, and then additions to service for the Advent include the Advent ca uh, candle hymn the Emmanuel, or and Emmanuel, Emmanuel at the sung response after the blessing of the offering. So those will be some, some additions. And now let's listen to our prelude.
Good morning. Joy to the World, a beloved Christmas classic hymn, is now over 300 years old. Isaac Watts wrote this hymn as his interpretation of Psalm 98. And we are using it this year as our Advent theme, drawing on resources from Worship Design Studios. You will hear echoes of this song throughout Advent, and then on Christmas Eve, we will sing the whole song with much, much joy. And now I invite you to breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. And I invite you to join me in the responsive call to worship. We gather together to worship the one who is joy. And as we come together, our hearts are expanded. We remember that the heavens declare God's praise as the sun rises and light multiplies. Nature, including humanity, yearns to reach and expand towards the light so that all might know true joy. All of the earth declares God's glory. May we do so as well. And now I invite you to join me in prayer. We sing a new song to you, O oh God. We lift our hearts with gratitude. Your steadfast love and faithfulness is ever present in our lives. By the strength of your indwelling presence, we are set free through forgiveness and truth. Your steadfast love and faithfulness are ever present gifts in our life. And it is upon you which our joyful hope is found. Like the work of our hearts, may this joyful hope flow in, giving us new life, strength, and courage for all circumstances, so that it may be pumped back out into the world as witness to you. As we pause for a moment of silent prayer, May each one know that you are listening and are ever present. O oh, merciful one, hear our prayers. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. We call out to our Lord this morning, O come, O come, Emmanuel, God with us. And if you would like to join me in singing, please stand if you want to stand and, and sing with me, O come, O come, Emmanuel.
We have come to our Young Disciples time, so if we have our youth at home worshiping with us, feel free to, to come a little closer to what you're watching. And I see we have a couple youth here today joining me. I'm going to have a seat here. You want to sit down here in front of me? <clears throat> so this week, we begin the special time period of the church calendar known as Advent. Can you say that? Advent. Advent begins four Sundays before Christmas Day, and today is the first Sunday of Advent. Now, there's a special color associated with Advent. Can you guess what it is? Purple! Excellent! You are so wise. <laughs> Purple is the traditional color of Advent, although some churches use royal blue instead. We have changed our cloth banners to the purple ones, like the cloth on the communion table, the one on the pulpit, and the one on the lectern. Altogether, we call these special cloths paraments. Can you say that? Paraments. There's something else that we added to the sanctuary for this Sunday that only comes out this time of year. Do you see it? That's right the Advent candle wreath. It has three purple candles and one pink one to represent the four Sundays of Advent. Now today, we will light the first candle, and then each Sunday we will light one more to symbolize how the light of Christ is getting closer as we move closer to our celebration of Jesus' birth on earth. The first Sunday is traditionally Hope Sunday, and the candle we light today will represent Hope. Now, sometimes we use the word hope as a verb to mean we are wishing for something, such as, I hope the Cardinals win the ball game. I hope I got an A on my report card. I hope Grandma will bake cookies for us this weekend. Those are wishes. We wish for those things to happen, don't we? They might happen, but they might not. So when we talk about hope at Advent, we are talking about something beyond our own wishes, something beyond what we can see now. This kind of hope helps us not to worry, knowing that God is always with us, and knowing that God is faithful to keep God's promises. We can face the future without being afraid when we hold on to the hope that is found in God, and the birth of Jesus is a sign of that hope. Now, each week, during this time, we will talk about the things we have added to the sanctuary as we continue to prepare for Christmas. And now, I'm going to invite you to join me in praying for God's help as we prepare ourselves, too, for Christmas. Now, this is going to be an echo prayer that includes hand motions, so you may want to keep your eyes open for this prayer and look at me. Sam, you might want to sit up, buddy. Then, you may repeat what I say and do. And grown-ups, you're welcome to join in, too. The words will be on the screen if you need them, okay? So I'm going to say something. You're going to repeat and do the hand motions, okay? God, help us to prepare our eyes for wonder. God, help us to prepare our eyes for wonder. Prepare our ears to listen. Prepare our ears to listen. Prepare our hearts for joy. Prepare our hearts for joy, and help us prepare our lives for you, and help us prepare our lives for you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. As you return to your seats, I'm going to ask our young at heart to join me in singing, let heaven and nature sing, let heaven and, oh, wait, 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 no, that's not right. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, you guys can go. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, I've got so many songs stuck in my brain now. I'm struggling. Um, it's the end of joy to the world. Um, that was right. Let heaven and nature sing. Let heaven and nature sing. Let heaven, let heaven and nature sing. Oh, my goodness. Thank you all for helping me with that. 
So at this time, we are going to invite the Hahn family forward, and they will be lighting our Advent candle of hope. The poet Emily Dickinson wrote, Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul. The psalmist declared, I put my hope in you all day long. Hope is more than wishful thinking. Hope is the spirit of God dwelling within us, reminding us we were never alone. Hope is our active commitment to be God's faithful people, whether we talk an easy path or face difficult trials. And when we have hard times or sad times in our lives, we have the hope of a better tomorrow with Jesus. In the book of Romans, Paul tells us, May God of hope fill you with all joy and peace, so you may abound in hope. We cannot buy hope for any amount of money. It is a gift of God for everyone. As well as we light the candle of hope, we embrace God's presence among us. Yesterday, today, and always, whatever we face in life, we put our hope in God. Now let's bow our heads for a prayer. God of all people of all time, lead us in a path of hopeful living. Help us to learn how to trust and believe and to, oh, you and to believe in the hope that you bring to our hearts and our lives. And all the ways life comes at, at us, let us know that you stand with us now and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Right. Our scripture for today, two scriptures, and the first one is going to come from Isaiah 2, 1 through 5. Let us hear from the prophet Isaiah. God will judge between the nations and settle disputes of mighty nations. Then they will beat their swords into iron plows and their spears into pruning tools. Nation will not take up sword, sword against nation. They will no longer learn how to make war. Come, house of Jacob, let's walk by the light, the Lord's light. And the second reading comes from Romans. Make sure that you don't get so absorbed and exhausted in taking care of all of your day-by-day -day obligations that you will lose track of time and doze off. Oblivious to God. The night is about over. Dawn is about to break. Be up and awake to what God is doing. God is putting and finishing touches on salvation's work. God began when he first believed. This is the word of the Lord. One of the lines of the song, Joy to the World, 
is, let every heart prepare him room. It can be so easy to get caught up in the hustle and bustle, decorating, making our to-do lists, watching out for the retail shopping, uh, best deals that might be had this time of year, and all the extra holiday preparations that we forget to slow down and prepare our hearts. Advent is a time of preparing and anticipating. Last Sunday, our scripture was from Isaiah chapter 1, where the author graphically laid out what was being seen. Violence, bribery, unfaithfulness, desolation, trampling on the poor. There are brief calls for repentance and glimpses of hope, but they are drowned out by these pictures of violence and rebellion. Then today, chapter 2 of Isaiah opens as though God is starting all over. What the author now describes is not currently taking place, but what will be in the days to come. People of every nation will stream to Mount Zion, including those who were enemies of Israel and Judah. God's instructions will go forth from Jerusalem. God will judge between the nations. The people will be transformed by this teaching. Can you see it? They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Wow, who can believe that? Biblical commentator Barbara Lundblad says that Isaiah's words are carved into the wall across from the United Nations building. Yet the world is still full of too many problems, and we can easily become pessimistic and lose hope. But God is still with us. We can still experience hopeful joy in a world filled with imperfection and sin. Lundblad goes on to say that the author of Isaiah is not naive. This person is not a Pollyanna prophet. The vision offered here of weapons of war turned into agricultural tools and images of death dealing turning into food producing is a vision of tomorrow. And it's important for us to remember that biblical visions come to us from the future longing to shape the days in which we are presently living. These visions of hope call us to a new perspective. Interestingly, in April of 2015, Archbishop Desmond Tutu traveled to the home of the Dalai Lama in India for them to create together what they hoped would be a gift for others. Together, they looked back over their long lives to answer a single burning question. How do we find joy in the face of life's inevitable suffering? This momentous week of conversation between Archbishop Tutu and the Dalai Lama resulted in the Book of Joy. In this book, one of the pillars of joy that they identified was perspective. Marsha McPhee says that opening ourselves to different perspectives can bring a sense of hope in the midst of despair, allowing joy to creep in no matter what. Opening to the perspectives of others can shift our fear to compassion, turning swords into plowshares. McPhee describes hope as the thing that can surprise us, that does surprise us. And surprise happens most often when we allow ourselves to be open and to look around and to change our perspective. So we get surprised by a different way of looking at things. It brings us hope and we reconnect to the joy that has always been there all along. 
Salvation is near when we wake up, says Paul in today's scripture from the letter to the Romans. Another way to think of this is when we prepare room in our lives for new light, new insight, new hope to enter. Theologian Susan Eastman says that the sky is brightened, the alarm is ringing, day is at hand. It's time to rouse our minds from slumber, to be alert to what God is doing in the world, and to live in accordance with God's coming salvation. Paul's wake-up call comes in the midst of teaching about mutual love and acceptance in the fellowship of faith. Paul reminds his hearers of their common hope in the clear and revealing light of God's coming day of salvation. This hope is the motivator for a new way of relating to one another that Paul wants for the Jewish and the Gentile Roman Christians to adopt. Eastman says that in the midst of the bitter divisions eroding many of our churches, as well as our country and our world today, Paul's words bring needed perspective. In the wonderfully counter-cultural season of Advent, Paul gives us a way to name the present situation. It is still dark, still nighttime. We still indulge in quarreling and jealousy and oppression. Paul intends to give us night vision to see and name this division while at the same time holding on to the hope that the dawn is coming. And it is in this hope that we can find the strength to recognize that other human beings are not the enemy. We are to work against the destructive forces of selfishness, greed, and destruction that attempts to divide, oppress, and enslave humanity through fear and hate. Let us now take a moment to consider a few questions. What or who needs to be lifted up in hope this day? Where have we fallen down in celebrating the beauty of each human being? What keeps us from making room in our lives for God? What perspectives need to be shifted in order to really and truly embrace hope? And are we contributing a voice of hope or a voice of negativity? Let us pray. Holy God, you are our hope. You are the hopeful joy that runs deep and wide underneath all of life. We know you are ever present. And we pray that you will constantly be shifting perspectives, turning fear to compassion, and grinding our swords into plows. Help us prepare room for your work in our hearts this day. Help us prepare room for your work in our church this day. Help us prepare room for your work in the world this day. Help us to be conduits for your hopeful joy. Amen.
How many times have we looked out on this world that we live in and think, God, why can't you bring more joy to this world? It's not just up to God. We, too, can bring joy to the world. Sunlight hidden by the clouds, it may seem that there's nowhere we can turn. Yes, the days will come and days will go, but deep within our souls we know when we wake up, there are lessons to be learned. People who can't seem to be If you so desire, I invite you to stand and let us join our voices in preparing for communion with our communion song, Now We Come Before God's Presence. Let us sing.
seated. It is truly a feast divine that nourishes us in some mysterious ways. For it was on that night when Jesus knew what lay ahead, he was thinking of his disciples. And I believe he was thinking of all the disciples that would come in the future, knowing that this would be a table that would nourish us and strengthen us and help us to continue following in his way. It was on that night when he gathered with them for the last meal before his death, when he took the bread, and after he had blessed it, he broke it. And he said, this is a symbol of my body given for you. When you eat of it, remember me. And in like manner, after the meal, he took the common cup. And he said, this is a symbol of the new covenant. My blood shed for you. When you drink of it, remember me. And so it is through the ages that God's people who are followers of Jesus have remembered him each week using whatever elements they have that are common to them or, 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 or convenient to represent the bread and the cup and to remember. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we're grateful for this opportunity to come around your table as fellow believers, as fellow Christians, Christ followers. Lord, we remember, we do remember the sacrifice that you made for us. But that's not the end of the story. The end of the story is that you rose again and you've given us hope so that we might celebrate and that we might go out and proclaim your great love for us and that we will live in heaven with you forever if we believe. Lord, we thank you for this Lord's Day and this opportunity to worship you collectively. And as we think about going out and as we pray the words that you taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Be not temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory.
This month of November, we have been focusing on gratitude with the help of our gratitude guide each day. But really, we practice gratitude all year round. And one way we do that is in our giving. As we give from hearts filled with gratitude. And when you choose to give to Hazelwood Christian Church with your time, your talents, and your financial resources, you are helping to continue this congregation's witness of God's hopeful joy. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we do thank you for our many blessings. We come from this table grateful for the son that you gave us. We feel humbled that this man put aside the needs of one to ensure the future of many. Be with us as we go from this place. Here we can feel sheltered and loved, but to feel safe and secure in our world, we will need your presence in our lives and in our hearts. By placing our offering in the tray, we are granting hope and a purpose for our congregation and for the missions that we serve. Let us never forget that Jesus has told us that it is better to give than to receive. In this season of Thanksgiving, and as we go towards Advent, let us think of ways that each of us can make a difference in someone's life, whether by the gifts of our offering or the gifts of our time and our talents. Each of us has something we can offer someone else to make their lives brighter and more meaningful. We ask this in the name of your precious Son. Amen. Please, if you would like to stand and join me in this song response, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Let us go for here go from here proclaiming joyful joyful we adore thee <clears throat>
Joyful, joyful, we do indeed, we do indeed worship our God. May you be blessed, my friends, with a hopeful joy that rings deep in your soul so that you will be prepared in your heart for the birth of new perspectives for looking at the world, for being in the world, and bringing hope to the world. Amen.